Hey y'all, today we are going to be talking about starting seeds. Whether starting in the ground, out in the garden, or in some sort of seed starting system, starting seeds is a fabulous way to add more to your garden that's very inexpensive and kind of fun to play around with and it lets you try out new plants and I don't know, it's just a fabulous thing. I'm just gonna share what I have learned and my favorite seed starting methods. One of the seed starting kits that I have been trying and have had great success with is this one from Gardner Supply Company. And what I love about this is as you can see in the photograph, the tray sits up so it's not submerged down in the water. And it has this wicking fabric. You put down the base and then you would fill it with water and then you put in the tray and on this tray rests the soil with the little seedling planting. So then you take this wicking fabric and it curls down the edge so that it's down in the water that's in the base and it's constantly wicking water up that the seedling tree is set on. It's from Gardener Supply, and I've already used it a couple times, and I, I, I truly love it. It's so easy. We're gonna go ahead and plant some swamp milkweed seeds. Now, I got these from a friend, and they planted them, and they've germinated. So I have great hope that mine will do the same. So I take a bowl and I'm using the Espoma Organic Seed Starter. Is this the best? I don't know, but it works for me, so I keep using it. <laughs> it comes highly recommended. And you want to pre-moisten the soil prior to putting it in the seed tray. Now, if you just glaze over and it looks packed full, it's probably not. You do need to take a minute and press down because you want to get rid of all the air spaces. Air and seedling roots are not friends. Look how much more space I created there. So just make sure that you really pack it in. Since I know these seeds germinated successfully for someone else, I am going to take very precious care of them and just put one, maybe two seeds in each section. And if it doesn't germinate, then I can always go back and put another seed in. If you watch my channel regularly, you know me and the uh, Asclepius Incarnata <laughs> have not been having a lot of success. And I have had the best suggestions from you guys, um, and I have followed some of them. So, swamp milkweed seeds are one that require cold stratification which is where you have to fake them out and make them think they experienced winter by like putting them in a damp paper towel in the refrigerator or you can put them in um, perlite and vermiculite in the refrigerator or you can try winter sowing where you put them in a milk jug with soil outside so they get to be out in winter 
there's a variety of methods, but the swamp milkweed seems to need to think it's had winter, which is kind of interesting because here in Florida, I mean, you might have a, a night or two of super cold, but so now I'm just putting a thin layer of soil on top. And then I'm going to take my water and fill the base. Place on the cover and then this will go into my growing room under grow lights. And hopefully we'll have some great germination. Uh, another favorite seed starting kit are the little green trays that have the seed tray that fits inside, but they also have the dome that goes over that has the light in it. So I need to redo one of these because I've got one in there that's all fully grown and I took it out from under the dome light. So I'm going to refill this tray and put it in under the dome light and I'll show you that when we have it ready. One thing I do with these, as I've shown in previous videos, is I take a dowel and cut it into two smaller pieces, and I actually slide the pieces in under the tray. It keeps the tray from being completely submerged, and it gives better airflow, and it also makes it easier to get a watering um, squeezy bottle in there and keep water in the tray without having to lift up the whole thing. So I love doing that process. Um, this plugs into a USB right back there. And then over here is the Incarnata that I just planted. And it is under my big main grow lights. What I like about having these is they can go down on the lower shelf and they have their own little lights. It's fabulous. And now we're going to do one of my favorite methods of seed starting, and that is direct sow and just tossing them right in the ground. And I love to throw zinnia seeds and tithonia seeds all over my garden. Um, I've already got a lot of cosmos that I did that with, and they're coming up here and there. So I'm going to go show you a couple different ways that you can do it. Okay, so I absolutely love zinnia seeds, and I order mine from Eden Brothers, and they have not ever let me down. So I got some dahlia flowered, cactus flowered, canary bird, oriole. That's for a friend of mine. She knows who she is. <laughs> And my favorite, the ones that started it all for me with zinnias are the Pumilla Cut and Come Again. So I'm a girl that loves random coming up all over the place. So I'm totally going to mix these all up and just scatter them everywhere. And that's one way you can do it. Or... If you know exactly what they look like and you want dense clusters of certain types of zinnias, then you're going to be more mindful and place them where you want them to be. But you literally direct sow the zinnia seeds by just tossing them on top of the soil and then I give them a light watering in. It's fun. It's fabulous to see where they come up and what they look like and it just... It adds like bright pops of color all over your garden and butterflies and pollinators love zinnias. They are one of my favorite annuals to add to a butterfly garden. So we're gonna go throw some. Mm. 
I'm putting some in my swamp milkweed garden. I've got lots of empty spaces in through here that need filled in. And I'll probably go see where the heavier pine bark is. I probably will move some of that out of the way so that the seeds can actually directly touch the soil. There's a tithonia coming up from seeds that dropped. Oh, look, 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 look. There's another one and it's blooming. Oh, look, there's another one over there. Oh, this is so exciting to see. So now that I have kind of gone through and cleared the way um, for the cut and come again, the rest of mine just go toss because I've already got my open soil space ready to receive those beautiful seeds. And I just like them densely packed and just coming up here and there and everywhere. Another thing about zinnias is that you want to keep throwing them down all season because they'll grow and then they'll get older and they'll die and you always want new ones coming up. That's something I learned gardening last year is to keep throwing out more seeds like every couple of weeks so you always have more coming in and then you won't have this lull of this in-between phase when your first round of zinnias has expired and you don't have new ones growing in. All right, let's go. Let's go do some tithonia. Okay, so of all my years of butterfly gardening, the biggest butterfly magnet is the Mexican sunflower or Tithonia. They absolutely love it. It's like it's like the dessert bar. <laughs> it is like Publix birthday cake with buttercream frosting. Like this is it right here. So I scatter this all over too. Now the cool thing about this is they can get really big, but if you keep cutting them, they'll um, split and stay lower and shrubbier, or you can just let them grow up tall. Same with the zinnias, just scatter them. The cool thing about these also is that once you have them, it's very easy to get more seeds from the ones in your garden and you honestly would never have to buy seeds again. But the seeds are inexpensive. I got these ones on Amazon. And now I'm just gonna get some of my organic peat moss and I'm just going to sprinkle it over the area where I planted the seeds. The peat moss just helps the soil retain some moisture. And since it's been drier lately, it'll help the seeds get a little bit of a head start. I love the way this smells. It's so good. Very earthy. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, I'm sure there's things I didn't say that I should have said because I always do that. Uh, just ask in the comments and I'll answer as best I can. Oh, and hey, if you want to buy any of the supplies of the things I showed you today, like the Espoma soil or the um, little light up seed starting kits, everything I use regularly in my garden, I have linked below in my Amazon affiliate links. I also have a Joyful Butterfly affiliate link if you order seeds through them. I would so love it if you use my links. It really helps me and it helps my channel. And thank you so much.